All right, not the prettiest amplifier I ever seen, but um, since I'm a Demco fan and a collector of Demco, this is one that I um, haven't. I don't know if I've seen one before or just didn't pay attention, but this is a Demco 150 amplifier. Um, I think I already got a 50 or 60 and a 250 and a 500 but I didn't have a 150 and I saw this and like I said I knew they hard to find so um, I bought this off eBay shipping was fair it did make it uh, thankfully so we happy with that we cleaned it up a little bit it was pretty dirty and it came out okay it's not great but it's not terrible either um, this amplifier is one drive and two little six JG6 tubes in it. I think the 250 I got at one drive and three, if I remember right. And then this is it underneath. It's not a pretty amp. It's a lot going on in there. This one does have a receive amp. And it's also got circuitry in it to make it into a um, transmitter, a one channel or one crystal transmitter and you can see that crystal socket zooming in on right there crystal goes on the top end and those uh, coils and stuff go to the um, crystal oscillator and then it's a um, tube socket if I can get in there right there that's a 9 pin 6BQ5 tube socket and when I first saw that, I'm like, what is going on with that? It doesn't go to the relays. It's not a key in circuit. And I did a little investigating in that. Um, that's when I found out that this, you know, actually had capabilities of a one tube transmitter. But, you know, you see nothing on the front, you know, with that. And um, there's no information on this thing on the net at all, you know, that I could find. And then going over to the top that uh, can there would go to um, tuning in the crystal um, if you use it for a transmitter that's the top of the um, crystal socket there and then that would be the like pre-driver to for the crystal oscillator and then that would go into the um, driver tube here and let me turn this thing around Actually, I take it back. That oscillator would go into the driver tube over here, over here to the right, and then that's the driver um, tune cap right there. It's got a um, small trimmer for the load underneath, and then that's the two final tubes there. That's another thing that threw me for a loop for a second. That the um, you would think these two are the output tubes, and that's the driver tube especially being over here next to the crystal oscillator thing but actually no these two are the final tubes and that's the driver tube and um, I pulled out the because um, it did come with this uh, crystal oscillator tube and I pulled it out and I looked at the circuitry I'm like it looks like that's all bypassed anyway and I pulled it out and um, like I say it works fine without it it just you know you need to put that back together and rewired it if for some crazy reason somebody wanted to actually try using this thing as a one tube um, transmitter I know that um, DNA amplifiers the the Phantom 500 and the Maverick 250 they came out with the uh, one tube oscillator circuit like that and put those in those amps and they called them uh, 15 or 20 meter transmitters um, and they tried to sell them and market them as transmitters instead of um, linear amplifiers and they called the Phantom 500 the PDX 400 and they called the Maverick 250 the MDX 200 I think I got a video up of the MDX 200 aka uh, Maverick 250 already and then on the front it's pretty simple here uh, driver tune there and then final tune final load got a meter relative output meter uh, main power transmit standby 
low power, high power, this is not really a modulator type amp, so there's no variable or you know swing or anything like that. Just a low and a high. And an AMSSB just adds a delay to the relay. And it's got a pretty nice tunable preamp in it. It's got a coil in it. That little trimmer right there is actually tunes in the um, preamp. And those two right there are the input tuning, you know, for the amp and the input coil there. Uses a Pi circuit for the input tuning, so you can get a pretty low input SWR. Uh, the main relay underneath it's got a uh, the um, preamp relay. It's got a little fan in it. One driving two. And the transformer. And, you know, that's pretty much it for this thing. So, we're going to turn it on. Um, the other day, I don't know if it was YouTube or Facebook or whatever. I'm in a lot of groups all over the place. But somebody was talking about how to tune an amp. You know, especially if it's got drive, you know, a driver tune on this or a tune and low. And um, um, I'm changing up a little bit. First of all, if you tune an amp. Tune it on low first. You know, even if you're not going to use it on low or, or you know, uh, you're going to go to high. Um, tune it on low first if you don't, you know, know where you're at. Um, you don't want to use full power on an amp if you don't have to when it's not tuned. So tune it on low. It's less stressful on the tubes and the uh, other components too. Um, so tune it on low. And I got it keyed down. I'm not gonna tune it right now, but um, start with your with a dead key to start with. Don't modulate yet, and just tune the tune and the load a couple times for max with the dead key, maximum dead key. Then tune the drive. Throw that in there, and then start going back and forth. Drive, drive tune, final tune, final load, and just keep going back for max on a dead key now if you're gonna go to high then go to high and then uh, start the process again with the dead key you know tune and load tune and load then the driver tune put that in there drive and tune and load all tune those for maximum on a dead key and once you get the dead key solid where you're getting you know a pretty good output then if you want to um, to tune it while you modulating or whistling or going audio which you know I'd like to go audio or blow into the mic um, and let it swing and then I'd like to tune uh, for max with the audio in it um, so I'm tuning for max swing for the most part um, some people believe in dead key and it is leave it alone at the tune for the max dead key but that's okay but me I like swing so I tune for max swing but anyway it's best to if it has a high low tune it on low first and then it's easier to tune and load it up on the dead key and once you get it there um, you know um, to, and you want to modulate it hit the tune load and drive for for that so anyway that's my thoughts on how to tune an amp and once you get it all tuned up everything's doing you know what it can and everything you want to if it has an input SWR where this one has two you know that works like a tune and load but for the input and what you do tune, what you are tuning for there is the lowest SWR if you put a um, SWR meter in between the amp and your radio not on the output side but on the input side in between the amp and the radio or if your radio itself has a SWR meter you can use that and just use your radios SWR meter and tune for the lowest SWR not for output if you tune for output you can tune you know on a harmonic um, so you get more watts but you're getting false watts or harmonic watts or bad watts you know so to speak if you're tuning the input tune for output you want to tune that for the lowest SWR so that's my thoughts on tuning so we on high and hopefully I haven't messed with the tuning on this too much and that's my input SWR right there, 1.3 with four look, four watts going in on this radio, and um, I'm just gonna leave it on high and do peak right quick. I'm dead keen about 70 watts. Hello, hello. 
Audio. Talking about a hundred. Audio. Audio. Maybe hitting about uh, audio. Closer to 120. Actually, when I had uh, picked it up a little bit better, I might have nudged something or, you know, when I turned it upside down and around. It did do about 140 um, peak. You know, it'll do about 100 RMS on this on the high and it had cut it down about 25% from there we put it on the low side got a good work and receive amp and I actually bought this to keep it um, I'm a Demco fan and you know uh, other than the Demco name this amp is nothing special it's just I'm you know a Demco collector and I'm trying to um, keep everything I can get my hands on at least one of them um, Demco over there and I guess before I go rooms a little messy but uh, it's gonna go in my little uh, Demco pile over here a nice clean um, early Demco satellite uh, Demco bandalizer Demco waveizer the speaker Demco modulator this here is a two-piece Demco amplifier this here looks like a modulator head um, but it is kind of a modulator but it only modulates this amplifier here it does not amplify or work on a um, CB radio or anything by itself it has to go with this um, RF deck of the amplifier here um, so it's like a modulated amplifier and that's the modulator for the amplifier called a DPA 65 that's a swinging audio machine monster there and uh, that's the Demco 250 I was talking about. Same case, just they added uh, one more tube. That's one driving three with the 250. And then that's a, a Demco Demon 50, 50 watt um, base um, amp that I got. Um, one of the things I saw recently, but I missed, they make a Demco Scanalyzer too. Um, you know, it's a meter similar to these. And like I say, one I got is a wave elizer there in the plastic and a um, band elizer. But I missed out on a scanalyzer. If anybody um, know where I can get a hold of a scanalyzer for sale, um, interested in that too. I'm trying to get a, a complete Demco radio collection. And this is um, some of my keepers here. Um, beautiful R390A. This old Drake clone has been converted into a one tube three five hundred Z. Some executives um, that I um, got a collection that I'm keeping, and these here are my tube testers. <laughs> I converted those to one tuber, and they test different tubes. I got my tube testers. Anyway, I've been long-winded. That's it for this one. Bye.